evening everyone and welcome to the fifth film discussion that is being organized as a part of our ongoing exhibition season psyche uh, for those of you who are joining us for the first time i'm gayatri manu the program associate at science gallery bengaluru and psyche is our fifth exhibition season and third fully online exhibition season that explores the complexities of the human mind uh this program is supported by the dbt welcome trust india alliance and we're thankful for their support uh before i introduce you to our speakers this evening let me just uh tell you a bit about the programs that we have coming up over this weekend uh today at 6:30 pm ist we have a lecture by social scientist china mills titled unlivable life state and corporate violence in the making of suicide and next week on wednesday uh, 11th may at 6:30 pm we have a lecture by philosopher of science ali husseini who is going to be speaking about whether machines can come alive um with this uh, let me move on to the discussion this evening i'm very excited to introduce you all to uh, mutiganda wangunda and enjonge karangwa uh, who are going to be discussing muthi's film clerex bosco which is being shown as a part of our exhibition season psyche uh Mutianda is a Rwandan self-taught filmmaker and former film journalist having worked on TV series and films he focuses primarily on women's struggles in contemporary Rwanda his debut feature film Nameless won the best screenplay award at the Pan African Film and Te- Television Festival of Wagdu Wang- as well as the best actress at the Brussels International Film Festival As a producer his feature film A Taste of Our Land won best first narrative feature film at Pan African Film Festival 2020 and was nominated in two categories at AMAA's 2021 winning best feature film apart from filmmaking he's also the co-founder of the 250 film experiment a collective of Rwandan filmmakers as well as the curator of its cine club he also teaches screenwriting with various film institutions in Rwanda Uh, I'm also delighted to introduce you all to Injonge Karangwa who's a global health researcher singer and songwriter. In 2019 she founded the Hamway Festival at the University of Global Health Equity an annual event with a mission to enable collaborations between health and creative sectors to generate health outcomes and research and collective well-being. Karangwa also creates contents for museums and specializes in mental health public engagement. Uh thank you so much um Injonge and Muthi for joining us this evening on a discussion about your um extremely moving and powerful film uh, I must say Clarex Bosco which explores the story of this couple Clare and Bosco um who are living together um in lockdown um and experience financial hardships experience uncertainty that comes with I mean as we all um understood during the pandemic um I'm also excited to introduce you all to Alice Bullard who's joining the discussion with us this evening Alice Bullard is a Washington DC based lawyer with a practice in human rights trafficking uh personal status and mediation she serves clients in the USA and abroad she has worked in human rights in West Africa since the late 1990s From 1994 to 2007 Bolard was a professor of history at the Georgia Institute of Technology in Atlanta Georgia where she co-founded the Human Rights Initiative with generous sponsorship of the B Wardlaw Foundation Her publications include Exile to Paradise Human Rights in Crisis and Morishana Look The Struggle for Human Rights as well as numerous essays Uh thank you Alice also for joining us uh so early uh in the morning for you of course um with this i'd like to uh, i'd like to invite modi to speak a little bit about his film for those present in the audience who haven't had an opportunity to watch it yet and then of course in jongay and alice to uh, share your responses thoughts and questions <clears throat> to the film over to you modi thank you gayatri um Claire and Bosco is a project that was born through um, visualizing the pilots project <clears throat> initiated by UGHE and Hamway Film Festival organized by Injonge Karangwa and it's a story uh, that explores the financial and psychological impact of the pandemic just like we all lived in through those hard moments in over, over the past 2 years and 
I tell this story through um, this character, Claire and Bosco, on two different characters who are almost they are from the same background, but they are living different lives. And Claire, she's abruptly laid off by her boss, and then she has nowhere to go. And then she finds a refuge. I call it a refuge to a guy she never loved, but but the guy loved her. So I follow them. Uh, through their transformation, especially psychological transformation during the lockdown. I'll start. Um, so, thank you very much, Mutiganda, to um, introduce this uh, this this work, this great work that we, you did. Um, so you know uh, as you said it was uh, uh, born from a collaboration with this uh, project visualizing the virus that aimed at uh, looking at yeah the, the different impact and aspects uh, of how this uh, pandemic trans transformed people life and i think that um, one thing that would be very interesting for uh, our international audience here uh, would be to uh, to see how um, how much um, this film talks about our society. Um, and um, first, uh, to sort of orient your answer, there's, um, uh, like in all your films, uh, this uh, discussion about how the challenge uh, uh, generated by poverty uh, would affect women disproportionately. There is also something very special about the fact that um, Claire is uh, her profession and what it says also about uh, inequities in our society. So that would be nice to uh, to hear uh, your, you about that and also about how we sort of the, the brief, right? The brief of uh, visualizing the virus was like, uh, okay, we'd like you, we're commissioning a film that discuss uh, uh, how this pandemic uh, affected Kigalians. And then why did you make that choices and why those two characters and what do they say about us Kigalians? Yes. Um, actually, my, 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 when I was creating the, this project, I went through many stories and many drafts of those stories. Uh, I think it was over the period of um, five months, but I could not find a story that uh, was at least a bit or not stereotypical because, you know, everyone uh, in the world, we, we almost live the same life during the pandemic. And then um, one day I, I stumbled upon um, a story of the, this working class woman whom we never imagined or we never thought about their lives. And they were uh, actually the most um, touched by the pandemic because they don't have work security, they don't have savings, they don't have anything, just they're living on, on the daily basis. And I picked up um, immediately an interest in this character because first of all, um, she represents the society at large. And also, uh, also as uh, my biography says, I'm interested much in telling women's stories in the contemporary running society. So uh, it was interesting to see how um, I didn't, think much about any political or any uh, intellectual aspect of my film. I just wanted to tell the story as realistic as possible, paying homage to these characters, to these people, uh, being less judgmental to anyone because we all had the, the same psychological impact. So um, through Claire, I came to learn how much um, we were all affected but especially me too as an artist who has no uh, job security i i, I find myself through this uh, clear uh, character so and when i was making this film and after making it and when i was screening it it was very interesting how people responded to it, people were connected to it, people uh, had empathy to the character because 
at the end of the day, we all saw ourselves in this character, Claire, and we, we found out that we, we are all the same by the end. So this was the whole society. And I think, and as this uh, exhibition is taking part in, taking place in India, we, we, the, all, the whole world knows how India was very much touched by the, the pandemic. So I am expecting to see um, many Indian audience uh, um, finding themselves in this character and in this film. I'd like to congratulate you um, on, on the film. It's extremely powerful. And, and is, um, can you hear me okay? Yes, yes, yes. It's extremely powerful and you're right. It is, it does tell a story that touches a dimension of life that so many people can empathize with. I, I completely um, sympathize and empathize with, with your characters. And I wanted to, to ask you um, to talk about uh, Claire and Bosco as actress, the actress and actor. Um, I think at one point you you uh, you mentioned that uh, Claire's the the woman who plays Claire is that Cecile Neon Saba. Uh, can, can you tell a little bit about her? And I'm wondering, uh, has her life changed at all since this movie has been made? Oh, uh, thank you, Alice. Um, the, the the process of casting of this film was oh well as my, my also in my film the process of casting is a bit unusual i don't do the open castings i just um write the characters to the people i know so i wrote this character claire especially for this uh woman because i knew her she's my friend she's that that was the first time she played a film she's uh, completely non-professional she just works as a tailor in a chinese factory here in kigari and also um, casting her, I was searching for someone who was also, who has some similarities to the character I'm writing because um, this uh, actress, uh, Cecile, she's called Cecile. Also during the pandemic, their factory closed and, and, and she, she almost lost, lost her job and because where we are neighbors, where I'm, I'm now, where I'm now, it's, it's just a few blocks away where she lives. So we, are, we actually kind of uh, see each other every day. So I knew her story, I knew uh, her life. And also um, in the background uh, story of the actress, also um, I have a kid who lives at her mother. So during the pandemic, she had to, to take care of her kids in the village from a distance because she stayed in Kigali. So um, that was the first thing, the first criteria during the casting. And when I was explaining her the character, I told her, this character is almost you. Forgive me if I am going to expose your, your life to the audience, but um, this is, uh, you share some similarities. She said, okay, yeah, I see, I see the, the because I, I gave her the script, I see uh, some similarities, but it's okay, it's good. It's a good story, we are going to make it. And the only actor who, who was a uh, professional is the, the actor who plays Bosco. He, he actually plays in my first feature film, Nameless, and other people's films here around in Rwanda. And so, that was somehow the, the, the casting process because he's also my friend. I told him, this is your character. You are going to play this. Even if there is a script, you are going to bring in your own uh, personality and your own experience as an actor. And please, you are going to help um, Cecile to, 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 to play this character because she's not, uh, she's a novice, you know? So that was, uh, uh, in brief, that was the process of, of, of the casting. Uh -huh. And um, the, the violence that goes on in that couple is, is um, so uh, alarming. 
I mean, it, it really brings home the fact that the least of their of Claire's worries is COVID. The, the, the whole problem in her life is that she's lost her job and now she's living with Bosco and the, the closing, not the very closing scene where they're sleeping together and she wakes up and is staring at the ceiling, but prior to that, where there's the violence, it sent me to um, to do some research <laughs> because I I knew from um, my uh, previous knowledge of interpersonal violence that strangulation is a prominent way that women die in interpersonal violence. And indeed, what I found out is that um, only 10% of abused women report strangulation, but um, of those who die or who almost die, it's 43 and 45%. So it's, 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 a, um, it's alarming. It's a very alarming situation. And also strangulation, it doesn't leave physical signs normally but is used for coercive control and um, to make people docile. Yeah. And on the other hand, although it doesn't leave marks, the physical impact of the strangulation can manifest for weeks and weeks later on with difficulty breathing and internal damage that isn't visible. And it also causes um, psychiatric problems. So prior, prior strangulation is associated with um, a six-fold increase of becoming the victim of attempted murder or a seven-fold increase uh, in actually being murdered. And that made me realize that my reaction when I watched your film was my intuition was right, <laughs> which is that Claire could very easily end up dead and then Bosco in prison, which is just a very powerful, very visceral way of representing how the COVID lockdown impacted people, upending their lives, thrusting people into these desperate situations. Um, and, you know, if she doesn't die, what will happen to her? We don't know. I mean, the speculation at the end of the film is, um, it, it doesn't seem there's much good on the horizon for that, for that young couple. Yes. Um, uh, thank you for, for, for bringing up that point. It's actually the, the, the ending scene is, is the echo of the first scene where the, 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 the Claire is, tells Bosco that she's staying. You know, you see um, before we cut to black, he tries to strangulate, to strangulate her with her bra. And then, um, so we, have, we don't know what followed well, or if she continued to strangulate her until, well, he, he found out where maybe she, he, she, she she came to stay. So at the end of the film, um, that scene, I wanted to show in a metaphorical way the transformation, this, uh, the psychological transformation of, of my protagonist who, imagine living with someone you don't trust, uh, sleeping in you know, your bed with someone you don't trust. You, 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 you can't sleep, you can't eat, you, you, you can't do anything. So, and also uh, taking the decision to, to to portray to or to to write this this story as it is, uh, almost every day or not not almost every day, uh, but um, frequently I read the news of uh, femicide in our society in Rwandan society. Um, it can't pass a month without hearing a, a, a woman who died in the hands of their partner or their husband or their spouses or their, their boyfriends or their friends. So it's very alarming and it's, 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 
it shows the society which is at the edge of um, going mad, I say. It's, it's not it's not particularly in Iranian society. We see that everywhere in the in the world. Um, in 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 March, I was I was in in France and I was walking on the streets of Paris. I was seeing the postcards on every every corner of the street of a woman who died in the hands of uh, by femicide. So. I say this is a global issue, not only run on society. And in this film, by that scene, I wanted to, to echo about that issue of physical violence, but also bringing it back into Kriya's head as, as a psychological um, transformation or, or as a, um, a psychological issue she has. And I really don't know, and I don't have a comment about what the future of the couple because I, I, I don't know what will happen. But for me, if, if I put myself in, in, in the audience shoes, I can interpret as, uh, as Carl Jung, the, the psychoanalyst said, uh, a dream is the manifestation of our fear or our desire. So maybe, uh, that one that will not be the case, or maybe I don't know. Everyone has has an open uh, opinion about the film, but that's not uh, what interests me. What interests me is that uh, the 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 struggles of women in my contemporary society. That's part of it because a woman has to live in fear uh, because their partner might might end up killing them, and also there are women who kill. Um, their spouses or their partners, but almost all the cases they are in case in, in they are in case of uh, self um, defense. So you see that violence and also which is brought uh, by financial instabilities and not 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 only talking about the the COVID situation now in also in the real life in uh, out of COVID situations. These are frequent cases, but COVID situation amplified them. So that was that was the point of me uh, putting in that scene, writing it that the way it is. The, the the violence is psychological. The um well and the mental health impact of the COVID. Um, yes. I know the situation the best in the United States right now, but I'm. I, I know it's a, it, it's a situation that has sent a lot of people, sent a lot of people into um, a tailspin with their mental health. And then yes. the resources haven't been there to address it in the slightest. So that the, really the, the least of people's worries has been actually getting the, the, catching the virus. Mm. I think that's why really this film is so uh, important because uh, for, for us here in this society, there's a lot of things about how there's a new new future for the Rwandan women, right? We have uh, all of, a sort of very, uh, is it 67 in parliament now? There's a lot of opportunities yes. for women. There's a lot of, um, Another discourse uh, about uh, girls' education, um, though there is still, as you said, very, very frequently uh, on the radio or uh, by word of mouth, you understand the, the degree of violence that would happen in some part of the society. And uh, uh, I think that um, we don't view uh, this type of analysis that you, you what you, you have you have put in, uh, in our film. We have most of the time to make it ourselves. Um, to push it in the conversation about gender, gender rights, gender, uh, gender-based violence. Uh, that, that's, uh, and as you said, like, uh, not only it's not, uh, uh, probably COVID was not um, the main worry in that house, uh, but um, now that, for example, the, the pandemic has less and less impact on our lives, uh, not only the aftermath, I guess, that, uh, but there's a lot of... Um, writings now about the fact that the mental health effect uh, at the collective level uh, will not uh, uh, will be will be seen for years um but also what you, what you point in your film um is something that is not going anywhere uh 
until I don't ever not uh, have a clear solution to propose, but uh, it should not leave our minds. I think that uh, maybe COVID um, brought back to our attention things that were already existing, but yeah, should not go away with with this pandemic effects uh, reducing. That's, that I think for 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 here, it's a very important film for for that actually. Yeah. Yes. And, and also, uh, from the point of view of the background of my character, my protagonist, Kaya, it's uh, the violence against them is perpetual. It's perpetual because, you know, um, me as, as a person, I've never used a housemate, but I explore my neighbors, my, the people I frequent, they, I read the articles, I see the news about the violence, the perpetual uh, violence against that they are subject to. Uh, psychological violence, physical violence, um, also economic violence, because that's that's part of the problem. Also, because um, I don't know if if it's, it's it's the same case elsewhere in the world, but in our society, how many times do you, do you check on your your mate? Uh, good morning, how are you? It, it's almost never. It's almost zero percent, and. I've seen uh, in many cases when a housemaid breaks a cup, a, a mere cup, it's just a cup, uh, they are almost subjected to firing or being cut the, 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 to, from their salaries, from their little salaries to pay back the, the cup they broke. So that kind of violence also adds up to the to the mental uh, health uh, issues, to the psychological um, uh, issues that, that these people face. And so seeing Claire moving to Bosco as a solution to her life, uh, is th that's, part of, that's part of that same case, that's part of that same violence. She, 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 or she, she almost knew, she, 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 almost sees herself as an important character so so who cares about me wherever i'm going i'm, I'm on my own I'm, I'm not an important person in the society so that's that's kind of violence is prevalent in, in in our society i don't know how it is in other societies but that's also part of my protagonist in my film it is a um it is a common form of oppression and even enslavement and like for domestic enslavement in the US, um, the working inside a home in that way is is a prominent method. I mean, the other, the other is um, uh, forced, forced trafficking into sex work, which is yes. also somewhat on the horizon for your character. Right, I mean, Bosco is joking about it. He's like, "Oh, go get food, go get food, and you can pretend you're a prostitute." But it, you can <laughs> sense that that isn't an implausible outcome for Claire's character. Yeah, yeah. yeah that, yeah, that, and that's that's good point. You 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 really saw the whole film. You 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 paid attention to the details, and. And I don't know if this film is a drama or a comedy or a dark comedy, but the Rwandan audience laughed a lot about when, when they watch it. And particularly that scene, it, they, they find it funny, but it's a really serious scene. It's a serious issue. Um, and maybe that's the echo of uh, all the, the, the predetermination of our future. Maybe. Why not? That's open to interpretation of, of, of everyone in the audience. Well, from a public health perspective, your film makes very, very compelling points about um, harassment, oppression, physical violence, and then the, over, the overriding mental health um, impact of the epidemic. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to ask you, if you made a film today, now, which I, I suppose you made this film a, a, a couple, of, you started this some time ago, but if you were starting the project now, would you um, have a different story to tell knowing what you know now 
about how the epidemic has proceeded? Uh, no, not at all. Uh, this room, um, I think this room will stay uh, for as many times as possible and it will always be relevant. And I, maybe I would not find that, that same story, but I would like, I would love to tell that same story over and over and over again without changing anything because that's, that's um, actually uh, when I was creating this film, I didn't want to put the pandemic at the front. I, want, I wanted the pandemic to be the, the backdrop of the story and for all these people because the pandemic will be over, but the lives of the characters will always be, uh, will always, um, will, the characters will live forever. So that's why I'm saying that if I, ha I have the opportunity to tell the story, to make another film now, I'll, I'll make that again. Well, it, you, I want to congratulate you again. It's a very powerful story, and I think you're right. I think your characters will love. Claire is a person who I think so many women can identify with. Thank um, you. Yeah, yeah, and her choices are so difficult. There's, I'd like to talk just a little bit about her, her mom, who doesn't appear in the film. She doesn't appear, but she is there in the background. We know that she's yeah. raising Claire's son, I think it is, a son. Yeah. And um, can you talk just a little bit about that situation, how common that is, and um, how that will move going forward? What the, the line that Claire says that really sticks with me is that she can't go back to the village because then she would have right in front of her eyes her child starving and she couldn't bear that. And so she absolutely can't go back. But can, can you just yeah. talk a little bit about that backdrop? Yes, um, actually Claire's mom is, is um, an image of many mothers who have the, the, their daughters as a single mother. Let me uh, elaborate on that. I've been following up uh, the cases of teenage pregnancy. Actually, Claire also is the, the result of teenage pregnancy. I'm not going through the details of how she, she, she had her kid, but she's the result of teenage pregnancy. And in our society, um, from my research I did, is um, we, are, we, we, we are in the, in the patriarchal society, and it makes it worse when um, you, you still have a father. As a, as a girl, as, as a teenage girl getting pregnant, when you, when you, you still have a father, it's, it's, it amplifies the problem because that patriarchal image of the family uh, trying to protect the, 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 the dignity of the family, many girls find themselves on the street, pregnant on the street. Mm -hmm. And for the case of Claire, uh, she's still close to her mother because she's, she's an orphan. They, she doesn't have a father. Um, I'm not going into the details how the father uh, is absent, uh, but that um, makes her much more lucky to succeed in life because she now has someone who helps her raise her kid, who is her mother. And I think uh, her mother being in the, in the background, for me, I see her because I know uh, many moms in the villages who have their daughters working as housemates in Kigali or in other cities. Uh, supporting their, their 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 kids, and a mother is 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 always a hero of the story. Claire's mother is a hero on the, on 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 a small proportion of the story. Claire's mother is a hero of, of this story because she 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 supports her. She she understood her. She 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 she, she chose to to help her deliver her baby and 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 go to, to, to work in, in the city. But th this pandemic pushed her to the limits the, because she, she, she knows her mother is poor herself. She's in the village raising her kids and other siblings alone. And she can't, uh, she can't add up to, the, to her mother's troubles. So I think that's, 
that's a small proportion of of Claire's um, of Claire's life, and also Claire's self when she grow she grows up, and that's that, that's a collaboration between mother and daughter wherever you are. I'm sure if Claire goes back and tells her mother I'm married, her mother will understand because I don't know uh, how the chemistry works, but that's that's how I saw it from my my, my research. And also as a, as someone who who grew up with a mother who was raised by a mother, a single mother, I find uh, Claire's mother as also my, my my mother and understand her completely and her choices to support her daughter and raising her kids is, is really, it's, it's realistic. That's how uh, our mothers work because they, they, they love their kids. There is no mother who, is, uh, who wants to lose her kids, which, which is Claire. Well, even, when, even after Claire has been at Bosco's and, you know, when she first goes there, there's violence. So it's between the first time and then the, the closing uh, episode. And her, she has that phone call with her mom and she laughs. Yes. She yes. laughs. She says, Oh, it's fine. There's not too much. We're not working very hard. We're just sitting and watching television. And yes, I'll yeah. send you money. I'll send you money. And that, um, the speculation there on the level of mental health, when you're, you're bleeding, it's a kind of a double life, right? She can't mm. bear for her mom to lose this image of her as somebody yes. who's safe and has a stable job and is, you know, she's a domestic, yes, but she's living in a good home. Um, mm. And that that scene is just heartbreaking where she, she can't even bear to tell her mom. So her mom is raising her child and um, and yet Claire can't, she can't afford to be honest with her. Yes. Uh, also, you can be close to your parents. Uh, really, uh, lies is a, is a form, is the same form of protection, protecting yourself, protecting them, and also, as you say, the mental um, impact of her previous life. She she's not proud of, of of who she's becoming, of who she became, or where she is. She can't tell the truth, and because also she has to provide for 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 her family, and now she has no job. She, she really doesn't know how to 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 tell the truth, and that uh, that lie is a love. It's, it's a form of communicating her love to her mother and her kid, and also it's it's like lying to protect the one you it love. It is. It is. It's a form of love, and it's also from a from a uh, psychological point of view, it's denial. Yes, and and that is is this it can lead to quite severe um psychiatric outcomes depending on how how much you have to invest in the denial how much energy and how much time you you put into splitting your life into these different personas and and for her mom she's one person and for bosco she's someone quite different and that can yeah. um create deep instability in, in the mind. Yes, With, absolutely. Yeah. Her Those lies isolate her. She's alone. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, she's very alone. Yeah. yeah. It's such a powerful story. I hope it Thank reaches a, a, I hope it reaches a huge audience. Do you, yeah. do Thank you. Uh, yeah, I, I would like to point out on the technical and cinematographic uh, point of view, and um, also uh, the, the the choice of the shot and the aspect ratio. You also uh, help to tell the, the 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 psychological change of my character. And if you paid attention, you can see the film begins with wide angle uh, shots and also wide screen. Aspect ratio, and as she steps, um, she, she 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 goes through the alley, going to Bosco. Uh, the 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 screen squeezes from the 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 wide screen to the four on three aspect ratio, 
And that I made that choice to to show how her mind is closing in and 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 this psycho- kind of of claustrophobia is like she's going through into a, a prison cell. As you, you you know, the prison cell, they are very small rooms. And also the whole story which passes through the, those prison cells, it's 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 always um, psychological stories and psychological transformation she's going through. It's like she's going into a prison cell herself. That's why I I changed the aspect ratio and it changes on screen as you see it. It's, it's, it, it doesn't come bam, no, it, it changes. It, the screen squeezes as you see it and stops at three on th- uh, four on three aspect ratio. That's also, um, Another point, another aspect of uh, visual aspect of the story to, to, to showcase her uh, psychological transformation. I wanted to point have, that out. I, I have two follow up questions. The, the artistry involved in your film is considerable. And I'm, I'm wondering if you are able to platform the film at various, uh, I don't know, international festivals. And my second question follow up on that is uh what are your next film projects you you said if you made another film about COVID you would still want to tell the same story and you want to tell the story over and over but do you have a new project under works um currently as we speak I'm in post-production with my second feature film uh, it's almost also talks the same subject of uh, it's the subject of teenage pregnancy. It's called uh, Fiona, a girl from Madrid, and uh, uh, Madrid is the met- metaphor for our uh, Kigali Central Prison. It's a metaphorical name that was given to the to that prison. So it's a, it's a, it's almost the same. Um, it's, I'm 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 revolving around the same theme. So the film is in post production. And I'm also writing my other feature film project about a, a young a young a young mother who is uh, working as prostitute uh, for her and her son's sub, uh, subsistence. And she meets a, a young pregnant girl, and she does everything she can to save her from the street, from becoming like like she she is. So. Yeah, those are two uh, ongoing projects I'm working on uh, now. Yeah. It's it's an impressive um, it's an impressive uh, topic for you to take on. You'd almost think that you know a woman filmmaker should should be making <laughs> these films, um, and so your your empathy is is impressive as is your artistry it really uh is very striking and are do you have um potential festival um releases or or uh what do you call them um competitions that you can put the your short or or your upcoming ones will they be in any festivals do you know uh, you mean for Kira and Bosco? Well, that's your short. That was my first question. And then you said you're already in post-production with your next feature film. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll, we are now, well, it's, uh, it's, it's now still uh, it's, uh, not disclosed, uh, but we currently received a funding. It's, it's, it's in the funding. Um, it's now we are, we are uh, searching for the funds to and the partners to finish the film, the post-production. Oh. And we have been lucky to receive 50,000 USDs from a fund, which is not, I cannot disclose for now. And I think that money will help us to finish the film. And so in terms of festivals, yeah, we, we, are, we are still working on the post-production and because it's attracted, it's, it's attracting many festival programmers and I hope it will have uh, a good festival life and I can yeah the, the project has participated in in a class workshops and uh, screen international the newspaper the cinema newspaper wrote good things about it 
I'm going to find the, an article and I'm sharing it. And yeah, this is the article. I'm going to share it with you so you can see it. I'm not sure if you can access the article because Screen International requires to be uh, to to register to be able to read the articles. But you can, you, yeah. I hope you can open it. So it's it's it, it was an article which was uh, written by Screen International about a project which were participating in Atlas workshop which I was participating in, and they really said good things about the project. I was very impressed. It was a film that I shot um, with a small group of people in a very short period of time because I shot it in four days. Here's the article. And so, yeah, it's, it's getting an interest in, in, in the festival programmer circuit. So I hope to will have a good festival life. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Moti, Alison, and Jonge for um, this extremely engaging and important conversation. For those who are present in the audience, I'd like to remind you to post any questions if you have them in the Q&A box. Uh, but while they begin to sort of type in their questions, I thought I might take the liberty of asking you a few questions myself. So, uh, Muthi, I thought that um, it was interesting the way in which your film explored the idea of home. And uh, during the lockdown, you know, we heard this constant refrain of stay at home and stay safe. But as we all realized, home is difficult to define for many people. Um, it's a place of comfort and safety. And Sorry. Not hearing you. I think uh, Gayatri is probably frozen, so we will just give her a minute and see if she's able to rejoin. Um, but I think uh, what she was probably uh, going to ask you, Muthi, was uh, how would you sort of un understand or represent or think about the idea of home in the film, uh, given all the complexities that she spoke about uh, with the idea of home itself? Ah, yeah. Um, well, du during the pandemic, the actually the idea of a home, I, I might say it didn't change completely, but it was exposed. It was exposed because everything which were happening in our homes under the, which when were swept under the rug, they came to the spotlight. And I, I always uh, read the articles there was our one interesting article uh, by uh, UNESCO, which was urging the African government to let kids go back to school, even in the middle of the pandemic, because home was not a safe place for kids. And that, that, was, that was heartbreaking. That was heartbreaking to see where you come um, uh, uh, thinking that you're going to rest, to, to, to get love, is not a place for you anymore as a kid. So that was really heartbreaking for me. And, and through uh, Kael Bosco, I, I was not thinking much about that idea of home because uh, from what I, I, I had read through those articles, uh, they, my characters were not ones the articles were talking about, but also the characters were impacted by the, that new idea of the idea of an exposed home. So it was really um, kind of disappointing that home is, was not really a safe place at all. It, it really was heartbreaking. So for me, uh, through Claire and Bosco, the idea of home well, I'm, I'm, I'm not say it's a battlefield, but if, if we see ourselves in, in the mirrors, in the realistic mirrors, maybe we can come back home and realize that we have to do uh, anything we can, we have to do to create safe homes for us, for, 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 for us, because you come home to, to, to raise, to, to get love. 
and it's not the case anymore. So for me, the idea of home, it was, it was exposed during the pandemic and it was not a home anymore. That's also, that's also a theme that crosses borders very, very much. The, yeah. And in, in the United States, the politics played out in such a way that um, the mental health community that was advocating so strongly for a lockdown and controls on people's movements and uh, keeping children out of school ended up in visceral opposition to um, conservatives and and family oriented people who who just said no this is really bad for for our families and for our children and indeed mental health crisis shot through the roof learning declined considerably loss of learning is um, widespread and it's and it's uh, worse for for people who are um, at the lower ends of the economic scale, it's much worse for them. The, the violence in the home has shot up. These are themes that are incredibly powerful. Yes. And also um, during this pandemic, a home, uh, as, I, uh, as I was saying, the homes were exposed. That's where we found out that the human psyche is it's, it's an unlimited universe and at the same time a prison because once you are, you are put in a position you are not allowed to move, you begin to think crazy things or you begin to, to, to your, your, your psyche unravels and it exposes dark secrets of, of, of your own existence. So that's, that's why, what the pandemic did and the, 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 the augmentation of the violence in, in our homes was triggered by that. Put a human in a prison and you see what uh, how or his psyche uh, plays out with. So it's, it was really, um, it, what, what was as if it was an experiment to, to, to see how human, uh, human brains react to, uh, to the confinement and it was devastating was heartbreaking and devastating. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Muthi and Alice, for your responses. Uh, before we wrap up the session for this evening, I have one final question for Njonge, in fact. Um, Njonge, uh, this film has been commissioned as a part of the Visualizing the Virus Project uh, by the University of Global Health Equity. So can you speak to where, um, for those of our audiences who don't know about this, uh, four filmmakers from Rwanda, made films in which they respond to the COVID-19 pandemic. Um, in Jongi, as a person who works within culture, who works within the cultural sector, who works to, um, you know, build public engagement about mental health, why do you think it's important to commission projects like these and uh, to platform such voices um, in, in these times that we find ourselves in? Um, thank you. Thank you for your question. Um, for so many reasons, it's important to uh, to, to, to uh, nurture and create platform for this type of collaboration. And I think for both uh, for both uh, the health sector and the cultural sector. Uh, on the health sector, I think that um, we very often see health uh, in a way that is. Um, uh, pharmaceutical, clinical. Not that I, I want to undermine. Uh, the, the amazing uh, benefits of, 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 of the, those two approaches, but uh, to understand um, and to achieve uh, health. For example, this film is the perfect example. Um, uh, uh, in this film, the, and maybe also as an audience, we understand a lot of the, those very strong forces uh, that are almost uh, bigger than us, that put us in situation where our physical and mental health are uh, at risk. Uh, to have any type of health impact, people have to really um, understand that we are not only dealing with a virus, we're not only dealing with injury, uh, we're also doing, dealing with very, very strong um, and structural forces um, that has to be sort of in any type of uh, approach to, um, to have benefits. 
And I think storytelling um, um, allows uh, to, uh, to, to the empathy also, because there doesn't need to be a will also to, um, uh, to, to create policies or, or, approach or anything that, that would take care of that uh, and put that in mind. And I think that work like the one that uh, Mutiganda uh, have proposed uh, really does that work. And it's very important in this uh, academic setting where we're not necessarily um, looking at a problem holistically. Uh, so I think in the health sector, it helps us may maybe being a bit smarter with what we, what we do. Um, and uh, in the cultural sector, I think that there's a, there's a very uh, strong appetite uh, with uh, many of the artists we work with that, uh, to actually uh, connect with researchers, connect uh, and, and, and share their voice in, in, uh, in, um, in maybe those more academic circles. Uh, and, and nourish each other, because I think that's really what's happening. Uh, there's, a, there's a dialogue and uh, everybody is learning and, and getting something out of that. Um, so yes, that's, and also I think that's, uh, and I so that's, that's one of the reasons why I think I proposed the Hamway Festival. I'm trained in, um, in global health, but I'm also, and I've spent most of, our, of my career there, but I'm also a, a, a musician and, um, I realized that whatever I'm doing, I'm doing the same thing. And then we have decided to see this word with uh, everybody in their boxes, divide knowledge in disciplines and things like, where um, I really doubt that to address, uh, to understand any type of topic, seeing it through only one lens and one window, uh, you would get a, a, a very complete uh, understanding. So that's a bit of, a, of why um, uh, we're doing that. And, and especially as a, it's a higher education institution, I think that's why we are pushing that. We're pushing that to our students. We're pushing that in the, in the way we do research. Um, yeah, for the reason I just uh, announced. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Njongi, and thank you, Muti, for collaborating on this wonderful film. It's been um, a privilege to be able to screen it as a part of our uh, film festival that's being organized um, for Psyche. It's an extremely relevant film, and we hope to see more narratives like this emerge uh, from other parts of the world as well. Uh, thank you, Alice, for your generous engagement with the film. I think you brought in a really important perspective without which um, you know we would have missed the sort of nuances that Muti was pointing to in the film um, and we're really glad that you were able to point those out to us so thank you so much Alice for your engagement with the film and for waking up so early to join us for this event we really appreciate it um, thank you to all of you who have joined us here to attend this event and are in participation we hope you enjoyed the discussion if you did, uh, we would encourage you to go watch the film, which is currently being screened as a part of our exhibition. It's going to be online for another week. So it's going to be up until Sunday, 15th May. So please don't miss watching it. And in case you missed um, this, in case you know someone who missed this conversation and would like to watch it, please do ask them to subscribe to our YouTube channel. The recordings of all our programs are uploaded loaded there and if you have any feedback you'd like to share on the program with us uh, please do take a look at the feedback form shared in our link and let us know what your thoughts are we'd love to hear from you and to improve as we go forward um, thank you all for joining us uh, on this Sunday evening and we hope you have a, a nice weekend a restful one and we hope to see you at our future programming thank you again Alice Muthi and Jonge. we hope to collaborate with you soon do take care Thank you very much. Bye-bye. It's been a pleasure.